Father, we are grateful. Lord, for all that you've done in our lives, we're grateful, Lord, for the opportunities we have right now to stand for you because this is a time where you waken your church up. That we begin to stand for you, Lord God, and stand up for children's rights, for babies' rights. And God, we stand against the tyranny that's been taking place in this country and all around the world. It's a move of the enemy to try and usurp authority, to usurp the planet and stop the harvest. But that's not going to happen. God, your people are waking up all over, all over, all over the world. Your people are waking up when they see the tyranny and you have woke them up. God, we begin to stand up and pray and see your face and cry out to you and say no more. No more, Lord. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, Lord. Come on, church, let's pray. Mercy, God. Father, we cry out to you now. We say, God, we just need more. More of your presence. More of your glory. More of your mercy. God, your faithful. Your word is so faithful to us, God. And we stand on that. We stand on that. That's our confidence. It's in the promises that you've given us. We take confidence. We take all that you've done for us, Lord God. And we say, God, we glorify you. We thank you. We confess you as the Lord and Savior. You're Lord over the earth. And God, you've given the earth to us. You've given us authority over it. The enemy does not own it. He does not have authority over it. We take it. We got authority over this area. We got authority over the parks. We got authority over this earth. We got authority over Arizona. We have authority, not the enemy. So God, we use the authority that you've given us and we say enough. Enough. No more. No more are you going to usurp authority over this place. Yeah, well, no more. No more. And we just speak to the court right now in Jesus' name and we decree in Jesus' name that abortion comes down in this nation. It's our time. It's the time for the church to rise up right now. It's the church's hour to rise up and say no more. We've waited all these years for the church you have, Lord. You've waited all this time for your church to make a stand. And so God, we're standing now. We're saying no more. No more. No more abortion. The judges are all going to judge for life. In Jesus' name. We hold them to that. God, we believe that you're touching their hearts. You say the king's hand, heart is in your hand. We say the judge's heart is in your hand. And they're going to judge for life, Lord, and not death. In Jesus' name. And we hold to that. We decree that. And we hang on to that. We say... That's what's going to happen. And none of them are going to change their mind between now and the time that they write up the, what the vote really was. No more. They're not going to change. We believe it's life. Life. Life in the name of Jesus. We just keep saying life. Life in the name of Jesus. Life. We decree life over this area. Life over this country. Life over Arizona. Life in Jesus' name. God, we thank you for it. We thank you, God, that you're doing mighty works right here. We thank you that the harvest is coming in. The enemy is not going to stop that. It's not about just revival. It's about the harvest. And you're going to have your harvest. And the enemy's not going to stop it. He's not going to cause it to be aborted in any way. And God, we just believe you're releasing warring angels right now as we speak, as we pray and we speak that you're releasing warring angels across this nation, across the earth. And they're tearing down every stronghold. They're tearing down all the entities. They're finding them and taking them out. In Jesus' name, that they'll no more have rule or reign over this area. That abortion comes down and they'll have no more blood sacrifice. God, they'll not be in power, but they'll be dethroned in the name of Jesus. And from this point on, God, from now on, 
your people will rule over this earth like you ordained it to happen. And the devil will be thrown down in the name of Jesus. And we're believing for that and all these corrupt politicians, all these corrupt alphabet organizations, the cabal gets all uprooted and dealt with. We're believing for that, that they all are coming to justice in Jesus' name. There'll be justice in this earth. And that's what we cry out for, God, is justice. It's been such a corrupt world, and we've allowed that infiltration of the enemy. We sat back and did nothing for so long. We sat in our easy chairs and say, whatever will be, will be. But God, not anymore. Not anymore. Your church is rising up and saying, no more. No more. No more. In Jesus' name, no more. Oh, we sing your name, God. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We praise your holy name, God. We just lift you up. We magnify your name, Jesus, in this place. We magnify you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Let's lift up his name. Hallelujah, God. Praise be to the King. Praise be to the Lord, God. Oh, Jesus, 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 we magnify your holy name, God. Visit us again, Lord. Visit us again, Lord, God. Jesus, some of us, Lord, have never really seen a great move of your spirit. Some of us never seen it like it's happened long, long ago. But God, we're believing we're going to be in for the biggest one that's ever happened in the world and ever will happen. We're going to be here for that. And God, we're going to be part of it. And that's what we're crying out to be right now, that we are in, Lord God. Let us in. Let us in on what you're doing. Let us in on the big one. Hallelujah, God. Whatever it takes, Father, we're in. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, we're willing to give up anything to be in your will in this last day to do what you want us to do. So God, right now, right now, right now, right now, do something big right here, Father. Cause this prayer meeting even to overflow, that there'll be more coming in and say, I want to be in, I want to be part of this, because praying and seeking your face is a big deal.
a place of safety when I'm in distress. All my strength to you I sing praises. For you, oh God, are my refuge, the one who shows me unfailing love. Oh my God, I will sing of your strength. I will sing of your unfailing love. We will shout for joy and sing. I love that. Hallelujah. Draw us, Lord God. Draw us and we'll run after you. Draw me, Lord. Draw me, draw me into your presence. Draw us all, God, today into your presence. We just want more, God. We just want more. We come here because we're hungry. We come here because we want more. We come here because you, because you have done so much in our lives, God. We can't do anything but thank you and worship you and give ourselves holy to you, Father. So we come into this place, God, and we say more. More, God. We want more. Let your glory come. Let your glory fall on us this day. Let it fall now, God, and draw us. Draw us into your presence. Draw me, O oh God. Draw me, O oh God. And I'll run after you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
Listen, when people know that Jesus loves them and takes good care of them, and his thoughts are toward how does he do it? He said, my thoughts you can't even count. He's talking to everybody. His thoughts toward us. Of what he wants to do. How he wants to express himself. You that are watching today, I thought I would bring in all the letters and answer some of your questions. But it's all about Jesus. It's all about falling in love with Jesus. It's all about expressing him and everything. Now, I know we don't do it yet. We got a few aches and pains. We're going to get in the right lane. <laughs> That's where somebody's going somewhere. How many know what I'm talking about? When you get out there in traffic, you got to be a defensive driver. And this morning, everything was going my way to get here. I'm going to take the traffic route from this lane. I was way in the back, and suddenly I'm on the front so many times at every light. I mean, John had people exiting, exiting so I could get here. Hallelujah. Just get to the church. Come on, I want to tell everybody, just get to where the people of God are. And where two or three are together, he said, I'm going to be in the midst of you. Don't you love that? Well, Lord, there's at least 20 here. So you'll be in the midst of two or three. That means he'll multiply himself. How many like that? Yeah. He's the only one who can do it honestly. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. He is the many fasted one, the many breasted one. Oh, and he's multiplying. Yeah. This right. morning I, I had a purse I was going to take to the goodwill, and I decided to put my other things in it that I was bringing. And I looked down in there, and there was a $20 bill in the bottom of that bag. Uh -huh. I don't know where that from. Maybe I should have asked the Lord to multiply. But God can do it. Hallelujah. Shabbat Abanda. He can do it. Yes. He can do whatever you need for him to do. Not what we want always, but what we need for him to do. How many know that he can give you strength? He said, I'll renew your strength. Yes. How many feel like God's renewing your strength? Yes. You want to do more? Well, give him more. You got to give him more. Amen. Don't put more sugar in the cake. Just give him more. Hallelujah. How many felt that little bounce? Yeah. You were bouncing around in his courts. Hallelujah. Now you know what real basketball is about. Hallelujah. <laughs> Just bounce around in his courts. Amen. Glory to God. Come into my courts yes. with praise. Yes. Come into my courts with thanksgiving. Yes. And this is, Lord, this is our salutation to you this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. For the song of the Lord, for the music that you like. You told us one day, Lord, you liked our music. You sent someone in here to prophesy. This, this was revival music. Judy Brown. Anybody know Judy Brown in this church? She's one of the counselors. She came in the back door there. She's standing there with her phone. I said, you see a vision? She said, I got a word. The Lord said, this is the kind of music I like. Thank you. you remember that, Richie? You're not very enthusiastic. <laughs> yes, yes, I remember that. You remember that? I remember that. And I rem I'm still remembering that. I thought if I don't do anything and sing, I'm going to please the Lord. Hallelujah. So you get that little, that, that's the spirit of the Lord moving in his ways. And he's flooding, his gates are open, and, and he, he's working himself in your praise. Amen. He said, I have myself in the praises of my people. Amen. Not the world, not the baseball games, not everything that's going on. Sorry, you football players, but it's our time now. We got them all. <laughs> Glory to God. We're going to cross the finish line. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're going to touch them. Yeah. Touch them. Yeah. Touch them. Glory to God. Let God touch your soul this morning. You that are listening, let him touch your soul. Let him write his name all over your soul. Amen. Woo. And that way you'll be praising him all day long. Glory to God. Glory to God. I heard the Lord say these words to me this morning. If I am for you, who can be against you? And I'm telling you, it sounds like the Lord is for the church. We're getting answers. Have you been of that? Yeah. Our friend Deborah called us from Virginia. Remember, we've had three or four calls with her. 
and the Lord told her exactly when they were going to come together. And it may be longer before the answer comes. Have you remember that? Well, it, according to the news, you know, it's like Esther was six months of other things. It may be June or July, but that's a good time to hear from God. Anytime's a good time. Amen. Glory to God. I see some of you, God's got skiing skates on. Skiing, what do you call them? Skis. <laughs> I just saw a person here. You got skis on your feet, you're on your back. And God wants you to put those on the ground and move. Amen. Glory to God, move. Oh, let an ease come. Amen. Let a glory come. Yeah. Let a shout come you've never heard before. It's down inside of you, just release it. So I'm telling all of you that, you know, there's a sister, I don't, I'm not gonna call your name, you sent me a letter and you have two children and you said that you wanted to be like me. You wanted that freedom. Well, honey, it didn't come overnight. It came through many nights and many days of sorting things out. But I want to tell you, your children is your field right now. That's the first priority in your life. And I know how it is. When we're young and we have children, that's why God gives us children, because it makes us mature. <laughs> yes, it makes us more adult. But he's giving you your children as your field. And when you raise children in the way they should go, the Bible says when they're old enough and they've learned, they won't depart from it. It says your children, if they honor you, their days will be long and prosperous on the earth. Just have patience. And know that it pleases God to pour everything that you have in you that is righteous into them. And then suddenly they'll be on their own. Glory to God. They won't be bothering you as much. Because <laughs> they will. Believe me, they'll pluck your last nerve. But thank God you got more than one. Praise the Lord. So hold on and keep fighting a good fight of faith. Keep doing what is good. Yeah. And if you make a mistake, just repent. And the Lord is quick to come when it comes from the heart. He's quick to come and forgive you. He said, godly sorrow works repentance. Godly sorrow. And it just didn't say being sorry. He said, godly. You're, you're sorry because we hurt God, most of all. But he knows that. And a breaking comes. God begins to break up all the hard places, the fallow ground. But the seed hasn't been able to take root. He breaks it up and suddenly the seed that's been sowed begins to grow and brings forth 30, 60, and 100 fold. Isn't God wonderful? There's some people out in California who's been very generous in your offerings. And I want to thank you. You're praying. God's answering your prayers. I got a call from, I got a, a, a note from a lady. She said, she and her friend, you know who you are, Alice. You've been praying, you said, for this abortion bill. Well, God has heard your cry. And he's working. And when the abortion bill passes, everything else is going to fall to the ground. Yes. The Lord said that COVID was going to leave America when the abortion bill is passed. Isn't that wonderful? Come on. Give the Lord a praise. Who I feel in all the up to my joints and my legs. I feel very deep water this morning. So your prayers and your offerings and your sacrifices is a sweet smelling fragrance unto the Lord that you're believing. Hallelujah. You're believing. That's, he said, only believe all things are possible. Right. All things are possible. Yeah. Amen. And you up in Montana, there's a massage parlor that's sending me a nice offering almost every month. You don't have to do it every month. I'm just saying, thank you for it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You keep believing for a revival in Montana, in Wyoming. You believe God. Just keep believing Him. Believe Him. I'll tell you this little testimony in. We were here getting ready to go to Australia. Got a prophetic word before we left. And the Lord said that royalty is going to visit Australia. And it doesn't happen often, but it's going to happen while you're there. Well, you would think you would go into Sydney or one of the, 
the big cities or the capital. But it didn't. It came to a little city called Blackburn. And that's where we were staying, right around the block. And I heard the Lord say these words, the early bird gets the worm. And I knew you were telling me, get out there if you want to see the queen. So I grabbed Ruth Heflin's book on the glory. And I was second in line to where the queen was coming back. Here she comes in her car, all dressed in yellow. Waiting, I could have almost reached to the window and touched her. I was closer than I'm close to you right now. She put her hand up and waved. Waved unto us. But the Lord said that. The Lord knows everything. Brother Masera prophesied over us. Royalty. Come on, we were the royalty going too. They just didn't know each other. Hallelujah. Yes, it's true. It's true. We're a royal priesthood. Yeah. Do you know there's two priesthoods? There's the priesthood, the Levitical priesthood. I'm talking to you. You that are listening in Texas. You that are listening in Virginia and Florida. You that are listening in California and Washington and Oregon. There are two priests. There's the Levitical priest and all priests are from the Levi bride, bride, bride. But there's one called a Kohimi. I may not be pronouncing it right. Because Israel is a priestly nation. That's why it's hated so badly. That's, that's not given to any other country in the world. It's a priestly nation that cannot do what other nations do. So every nation around it is really judged by how they treat her. And God takes inventory all the time. And we hear things in the news, and all we need to do is go a little bit deeper, and God will tell us why it's happening. So these Kohani priesthood could go where the Levitical priests could not go. So don't feel sorry for yourself if you can't do certain things. Don't, don't even mention that to the Lord. You can't do this, you can't do that. Right. Say, Lord, I don't want to do this, and I don't want to do that. And then you'll be like, Joel, this is that. This is that. Peter said, this is that. That was promised to the prophets of old. He'll take you into the hidden places where the secrets of God are, where the mysteries of God are. And he'll begin to reveal to you what his face is all about. When he says, seek my face. When you seek the Lord's face, everything is in his countenance that you need. Everything that you're looking for. And that's why few people ever see his face. Because that means you got to get very close. Very close. Glory to God. And he wants to be, we owe to be close to you. That's what I long to see. I long to be closer. Closer until you feel his breath upon you. So those gloomy priests could go into the hidden places. He that dwelt in the secret place. Remember, shall abide under the shadow. Don't you love that? You'll abide under the shadow. Where none of those things in Psalm 91. He speaks of everything. The day or night can touch you. Anything that happens. Day or night can, come, can not come by you. Well, he might kind of sit you up sometimes. You know, when you go to to get yourself employed in a country, a company in a higher place. You know, they want to know a little bit about you. So they, sometimes they'll take you, they'll, they'll start you on this wage. And we'll see how you turn out. We'll just turn in. <laughs> turn into God. Turn into where he is. And he'll trust you with the secret things, what he's working on, what he's moving in, and what he's all about. And you'll have the, the headlines and the news lines before it ever comes up on the pages or it's heard of on CNN or Fox News. They're not the only Fox in the world, come on. <laughs> God's got hidden manna. Hidden manna to you that are listening. But you have to seek the Lord with all your heart. And 